This lesson is about the K-Rain irrigation valve called the Pro Series 100 for residential, light commercial, but they also have another valve, 150, that comes in the one inch model that you may see on the market. It's kind of a straight up and down version, just like your normal traditional irrigation valve. It also has a jar top on the 150, but the 100 has this tilted design, basically for increased debris tolerance to you know pass through things that are coming through the water or whatever. But this particular model, the Pro Series 100, it comes in a three quarter inch or a one inch version. It has um, female uh, inlets and outlets in both slip and thread in both NPT and BSP, which is British standard piping. I think it's, it's the European standard and the NPT national pipe thread is the American standard. You also have a, a, a male by male and a male by barb version. And I think those, it comes also, this is a non-flow control and you can get this in a flow control as well. So let's talk about the, the specifications on it. The pressure range is from 20 to 150 PSI recommended on it. And the flow range for the three quarter inch version is one gallon per minute through 19.8 gallons per minute. And the one inch is 0.5 gallon per minute through 30 gallon per minute. So both of the models, both the three quarter inch and the one inch would be great for low flow drip irrigation zones or whatever. So really nice design on this. Um, Let's talk about the solenoid. Now, I couldn't find in the manufacturer's specifications what the normal resistance, the normal ohms is for their solenoid, but all the ones I've tested seem to come at around 25 ohms. It has 430 milliamps of inrush current and 250 milliamps of holding current. Some of the features in it are a self-cleaning metering screen that we'll see when we break this apart there on kind of on the bottom of the diaphragm assembly. I mentioned before, you know, that the tilt design is for debris tolerance. The solenoid has an encapsulated plunger. It actually looks a lot like the Irritrol solenoid inside and that it has a little plastic piece here that is the encapsulator which kind of holds the plunger down in there. It'll take a, a DC latching solenoid and it has you know both internal and external bleed. We have our little internal bleed screw here and this is basically for you know when you first install it or you've got a situation where there's some air in the lines this is what you would want to use to, to burp that air out but Basically, what I use it for is any time I install a valve, the very first time that I open that valve up, I use the bleed screw on it, basically the internal bleed. And what that does is allow the, the valve to open, the diaphragm to open and to pass water straight through instead of allowing the water to go through. Every valve has a little tiny little um, pilot tube down in here that allows water to depressurize the area above the solenoid and allows the solenoid to open. And it, those tubes are so small, you don't want any debris getting in there. So the very first time you run it, I always recommend you use the bleed screw to crack it open and let water through. And then from there on out, you can use the timer to, you know, actuate the solenoid. So we're going to put this back together here and I'm going to show you a breakdown. This valve has actually got a few different design features. It looks a lot different than a whole lot of other valves. And I think, I think you're going to find this a really neat design and seems to be a really fantastic valve out in the field. I've never had to rebuild one. So I'm just giving you the breakdown on it. It's not something that I've had to deal with a lot. It seems to be a really tough, a really solid valve. Okay, let's go ahead and break this one down. I suggest you go ahead and take the solenoid off first. The screws are pretty close in to the solenoid, and especially if you're using a, a power driver like I am here, you wanna go ahead and take that 
off before you begin. All right, we'll take our screws out here. I recommend on this one, you know, you just keep your fingers on the bonnet as you're taking this apart. The spring inside of it is kind of strong. It's got a little place where it's captured on there, so I'm not sure that the spring would bounce out into the mud or anything like that. Let's go ahead and take our spring apart, set it here. And one thing that you're going to notice right off the bat that's different about this K-Rain Pro Series 100 is that it has an O-ring on it. So if you're going to put the same parts back on, if you're just rebuilding this, if you're a homeowner and just want to take it apart and see what's going on with it, maybe flush it out, you know, I would check the O-ring, just make sure that it doesn't have any problems or it's flattened out or crushed anywhere. And, you know, when I rebuild a valve, I'll usually have a cup of water and a toothbrush around. So I would, you know, at least clean this out and flush it out and just make sure and down inside of here it's a little different than other uh, valve bonnets and that it's got just you know some different passages and there's a little tiny passage right here on the front where the solenoid goes and there's also in the valve body there's a little corresponding hole there you want to check those and make sure that there's no debris down in there that's clogging those up so let's put our o-ring back on and let's take out our diaphragm piece here and we're going to inspect it if we're going to use this one to put back in here as a contractor if I have to rebuild a valve if I have to take one apart I'm going to have a brand new valve with me and I, when I take everything apart, I'm just going to discard all of this stuff, all the spring, the solenoid, the bonnet, the diaphragm, and I'm going to put brand new parts in here because, you know, just as a contractor, I don't want to get a call back on this. I want to, if I have to rebuild it, I want it to be once and done because if I have to drive back out there and redo it because... You know, I was just trying to save a few bucks and put the same parts back in. Well, that just kills any little bit of profit that I had on that call or on that operation anyway. So I always like to just put brand new stuff back in there. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, everything is going to be good to go. So as we look here, we see that the, the self cleaning metering screen here and it's interesting in the design of this because it's a tilt version you know a tilt construction that the water that's rushing past the bottom here as it comes through is going to clean that off and there's some little you know places here that you'll want to check and just make sure it's clean and always just inspect your diaphragm if you're going to put it back in there and make sure that there's no nicks or holes or tears or anything Sometimes if a valve is left set for a couple of years and not used, the first time that it's used, the parts will be stuck together. You know, you'll be surprised. The water is supposed to be chlorinated on most city water systems, you know, but even in a city water chlorinated system, you'd be surprised at how much biofilm that you'll see stuck down inside of here in a system that hasn't run in a few years. So just make sure that, you know, this didn't tear on first operation or, or any operation for that matter. So let's take a look here. And it's interesting the way that this one is set up, the way it goes down into its pocket there, it sets in a little seat right here and just make sure that that's clean, you know, flush it out, use your toothbrush to clean that off, flush it out, stick your finger down in there, make sure that there's no pebbles or debris or shards of broken PVC or anything else that might be lodged down in there and causing some operations. I've seen some valves before that were hung open, and when I broke it apart, I didn't see anything down in there, but when I felt down in there, you could feel that, you know, as the water pushed it up, it would get up underneath the solenoid, but then when the water shut off, it would suck back down in there, and it'd be like a shard of PVC or something like that, you know, broken, you know, from a main line break or from a main water line break or something like that down the street. So just inspect everything, flush it out put everything back together here and what's interesting you know the spring sits on a post right there and it's kind of got a little capture to it to where generally won't fall out best I can tell but also what you need to watch out for is you're putting it back together right here on this piece 
it's got a little lip that holds that spring in place. So when you're putting it back together, and we remember that the orientation of the solenoid is always on the exhaust port, and if there's a question, usually there is a arrow, an arrow, you know, stamped or printed somewhere on the body of the valve showing the direction of flow. And so our solenoid is going to be on the exhaust port um, end of it. Pretty much every irrigation valve I know of is made like that. So when we put it back together. We want to make sure that that spring seats down on that little lid there. And now we just evenly push it back together. And on this one, it's got some some rotational uh, ability here, even though it's got a little piece here, it still can come out of round. So what I like to do here is just go ahead and thread two on each side. And just make sure that everything is lined up. And now we'll put the rest of our screws in. And when you're tightening this up, I look at it like, you know, when you're putting a tire back on, if you've got a flat tire and you're putting your tire back on, you know, the, the general advice on that is when you're putting your lug nuts back on, you tighten them up in an alternating fashion so that you're not squeezing one side or causing something to be, you know, off kilter there. So when we tighten this back up, we're going to go from one to there to back here, here and across so that we have you know, an even amount of tightening as we go down. And since I'm using a, you know, a powered nut driver here, powered screwdriver, I like to get it all the way down until it just touches or right before that and then tighten it up with a screwdriver. I've said this before is that these things don't take it, you know, a tremendous amount of torque to tighten these down. You just want it snug and closed. But I've seen valves that have been rebuilt to where the guys, I guess they just didn't know their own strength, but they were just trying to crank it down. And, you know, so I only, you know, left to theorize of why they did that either. You know, that's just the way they do everything and they just crank it down as tight as they possibly can get it. Or maybe it was leaking through this seal here. And usually if you see a, a valve that's leaking between the bonnet and the body, it's probably the inlet pressure is too high and you need to check that and see. Um, and I, before when I've seen some valves that were tightened down too tight, I think, you know, it was in a situation, gosh, there were like 200 PSI in the line. And so it, it was leaking through here and, you know, they had tightened it down so much that it was cracking the plastic and you could see it bubbled up around the, the, uh, the screws here. So, you know, you just have to remember that these things are plastic and they don't need a tremendous amount of torque to seal it back up. finish tightening this up just a touch here and bring it in. Okay, we've got all of our screws in there and we're going to put our solenoid back on. And if you're in the field in a dirty environment, just use some of that clean water. If you've got a bottle of water, a cup of water, just flush that out one more time and just make sure that there's no debris or grit or anything sand down in these Threads on, on almost every solenoid of every make, you know, these threads are pretty fine, you know, thin little threads there, and you don't want anything stuck down in there that would cause a leak or to cause it to not operate properly.